Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bosch. The number of clean diesel models in North America will double by 2014. Bosch Clean Diesel. Good. Clean. Fun. Bridgestone. Your journey. Our passion. Dow Automotive Systems. Improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by the 2013 Hyundai Sonata. Learn more at HyundaiSonata.com. Well, we've made it through another week. It's Friday, the last working day in August, so let's wrap it up and get to the news right now. Congratulations, Ford Focus. You are the best-selling car in the world so far this year. Nearly 490,000 Focuses have been sold, or should I say Foci? The Toyota Corolla is number two with over 460,000 sold. You know, it looks like that one Ford idea is really starting to pay off. Speaking of Ford, though, the company's accused of patent infringement. According to Bloomberg, a lawsuit filed by TMC Fuel Injection Systems accuses the automaker of selling F-150s with its fuel injection system that it received a patent for in 2008. Ford began discussions with the inventor back in 2004 to license the system, but that fell apart in 2008 when Ford allegedly said it wasn't interested in the technology. The system increases the dynamic range of the fuel injection system to improve performance and improve fuel economy, they say, by up to 35% in the city. Ford had no comment. While we're getting more new product leaks in front of the Paris Auto Show, Fiat will unveil a new 4x4 version of the Panda, making this the only four-wheel drive vehicle in its segment. And it sounds pretty serious, with two differentials that can be electronically locked at speeds under 50 kilometers an hour. That's about 35 MPH. It's powered by a 0.9 liter gas engine with 85 horsepower or a 1.3 liter diesel with 75. From a styling standpoint, Note how they put some bright work under the front and rear bumpers to make it look like it's got a skid plate. Fiat first introduced the Panda model 30 years ago. And here's why that Panda has such dinky little engines. A gallon of unleaded gasoline now costs about $9.50 a gallon in some parts of Italy. You can blame the European debt crisis, which has forced the Italian government to raise taxes on fuel to help cover its debts. Fuel prices may be outrageous in Italy, but they're worse in Norway, where a gallon of petrol can set you back more than 10 bucks. Now to the commercial vehicle side of the business. Meritor Wabco developed an electronically controlled air suspension for heavy commercial vehicles. The system's much more efficient than mechanical setups because it's lighter and uses less air, and because the electronically controlled suspension only adjusts to changes in load. Mechanical systems react to every bump in the road. All that extra adjustment consumes air, which causes a truck's compressor to run more often, wasting fuel. An electronically controlled suspension can also help improve traction. If wheel slippage is detected, loads can be transferred fore and aft from one drive axle to another. More than three million of these systems have been sold globally. Mazda officially announced that it's continuing to develop the Wankel engine. Amazingly, the small Japanese automaker is working on a range-extended vehicle that could launch as soon as next year. A rotary power plant is perfect for this sort of vehicle. They're very compact and lightweight, which makes packaging a breeze, and they can be pretty efficient when operated at a constant RPM. You know, on the subject of Wankel engines, we recently interviewed a guy that thinks that he has solved all of its problems, and look for that in a future episode of AutoLine Daily. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at Bob Lutz's garage and how Toyota develops new cars. You know why I pulled you over, ma'am? I need you to recalibrate the Doppler shift on the return signal. Radar's on the frisk. Do Sonata drivers know something you don't? The Sonata from Hyundai. We've got two great shows to promo here. Last night, we had Randy Stevens, the chief engineer on the Toyota Avalon on After Hours. Let me tell you, all you product development people, 
especially those of you who work on the Chevy Impala, Ford Taurus, Chrysler 300, Nissan Maxima, Hyundai Azera, and Buick La Crosse, ought to be watching that show. There's some great inside info on how Toyota developed this car. And then check out AutoLine This Week, where we take you inside Bob Lutz's garage. Many of you saw the after hours version of the show, but the television version edits it down to the best of the best. Here's a small sample. This uh, car is a 34 LaSalle, and it's identical to the first car that I have a conscious memory of when my parents in Scar no, in Rye, no, Ridgewood, New Jersey. My dad was working for Credit Suisse at the time in 1934. I was obviously two years old, and they, it sort of, you know, at the height of the Depression, my dad was happily, fortunately for the family, doing okay. So he showed up one evening with a, a, a LaSalle convertible. And I remember taking long trips in this, standing up on the seat, naturally. And, and this one's got a, a mother-in-law seat, right? Isn't well, it down with the steps or four rumble, on the side? Rumble seat. Yeah, we're, you had the three steps. This is step one, step two, step three. And then the you'd step in, and it's richly upholstered, you know, and drunken parties after after a, a night of partying they put four or five people back in here and <laughs> three or four in the front <laughs> well you gotta be really uh, have your wits about you to go up these steps yeah right that's hammered. that's the test right there yeah. if you can get in you're okay uh, <laughs> this is one of the original if you put this in the context of what other cars looked like in 1934 Remember, you know, the, the, the full black fenders, the upright grills. I mean, think of a 34 Ford or, or 34 European cars. I mean, they were still square boxes. And this was one of the first efforts at streamlining. It's actually a Harley Earl car. And uh, it's all the lovely Art Deco elements like the little chevrons, the, the biplane bumper, uh, those little air extractors. Wasn't this, this was Harley Earl's claim to fame, right? Yeah, this, I think so, yeah. This mm -hmm. is uh, his first, when they created the art and color section at General Motors That's right, yeah. for Harley. You can watch that entire show right now on Autoline.tv or check out our YouTube channel as well. Also, make sure you tune in tonight to Roundabout. It starts at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time on our website, Autoline.tv. It's a great way to kick off the long weekend, so don't miss it. And I say long weekend because remember, Monday is the Labor Day holiday here in the United States, and we are going to gratefully take the day off. So have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here on Tuesday. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.